Hi guys, my name is Terry. In this video, I'm going to go through Form 5 Additional Mathematics Textbook Chapter 4 Permutation and Combination Formative Exercise 4.1. If you enjoyed this video, kindly like and if you want to receive notification from our upcoming video, kindly subscribe and if you have any questions, kindly comment and give us feedback on how we can improve this video presentation. So let's get started. So the first question, you have a set of question contains five true or false question and five multiple choice question, each with four choices. So what is the number of ways to answer this set of questions? So for me, I will draw out, say, five boxes here. This is for the true or false question. And another five boxes here to represent the multiple choice question, right? Now, for true and false question, the way uh, there are three ways. Uh, now, actually, uh, if you were to include not answering the question itself, is actually uh, three. But if you, we just assume that the student will answer all the question, so you actually have two options for the first question. Yeah, for question number one, okay, student can answer true or false. Question number two, again, they can answer true or false. So that two option. Question number three, they can answer true or false. Two option. Question number four, two option. Question number five two options but for multiple choice question we know we can answer a b c or d so we have four options to choose from now again assuming that the student answer all the question i'm not leaving anything out so they are four the second is question number six uh, seven eight nine ten and the first five are true or false question the next five they are multiple choice questions so we have four options each so if you were to calculate the number of ways students can answer the question, you have to use what we call the multiplication principle. Like, you know, first question can have true or false, then you multiply with two options for the second one, multiply the two options for the third one, and so on, right? So, but I'm not going to write one by one, so I think it's best we just write two to the power of five, right? As for multiple choice question, you can have four options for the first one, like for example, student, the first question can put A, B, C, or D, maybe you answer A. Then the second question, you can have A, B, C, or D. So you can answer A, A again, A, B, A, C, A, D. So basically, you multiply them together, and we multiply all these four. That means there are five for them, so we write this as four to the power of five. Now, this will give us, if you multiply together, is 32,768. Yeah, this is such a big number. Now, we just want to clarify this, because the textbook, they give answer as... 200 so I, I hope you're, you're clear about this I don't know I think maybe they assume that uh, it is 2 by 5 and a 4 by 4 by 5 which is incorrect uh. it's not 2 by 5 uh. it's 2 power 5 uh, because you have two options two options two options two options two options each if you multiply together it's 2 power 5 not 2 multiplied by 5 okay so yep Please take note, uh, the answer is different from the textbook and you can check with your school teacher yeah, on this question, okay? So this is supposed to be the right answer. Okay, so let's move on to question number two. Find the number of uh, ways to create a three-digit password for log if repetition is allowed. Now, so a three-digit password, uh, so we talk about digit. If you were to choose any digit from zero to nine, we know there are 10 possibility. Yeah, 1 to 9, there are 9 numbers, 0 to 9, there are actually 10 numbers. So there are 10 options here. Because you can allow repetition, right? So the second one, you can use back the same digit. For example, I put number 5 the first digit. I can put number 5 again the second digit. So it does not reduce by 1. So the next one is also 10, right? So the number of ways you can write 10 by 10 by 10, or you can just write 10 power 3, which is 1,000. But if repetition of digits is not allowed, you need to reduce the number of options by 1. For example, the first one, I start with the first digit. We know it's going to be any digit from 0 to 9. So we have 10 options. And assuming I put number 5 inside the first digit, I can't choose number 5 in the second digit. I can only choose any other number than 5. So the number of options reduces by 1 to 9. And the third one reduces by 1 to 8. So the number of ways, we can write this as 10 by 9 by 8. Or in NPR form, 10 arrange 3. This will give us... 720. Alright, question number three. 
So how many numbers are there between 5,000 and 6,000 can be formed from the digit 2, 4, 5, 7, 8 without repetition of digit? So, okay, so let's draw five, uh, four boxes because why? This is 5,000 and 6,000 are numbers in 1,000. So we only have four digits. But the first digit, I can only choose number 5. When we say between 5,000 and 6,000, you have to start from 5. Now, you can't even start from 6 because if you start from 6, it will be more than 6,000, right? So I only have one option to choose from, right? There's only one digit 5 here. All right. The next thing is, for the rest of the digit, I can choose from 2, 4, 7, or 8. So I have four options, right? Then remember, this is without repetition. So you have to reduce the option by 1. So next will be 3 and 2. Yeah. For example, let me just uh, clarify this. I know some of you have probably haven't learned this properly. So I have four options to choose from. Let's say I put number 2 inside here. I can no longer choose number 2 for the third digit. My third digit uh, initially have 2, 4, 7, 8. As I've taken 2 out, I can't choose number 2 anymore. I can only choose number three, uh, number 4, 7, or 8. Yeah? So there are three options. And let's say if I put number 7 here, I can't choose 7 anymore. Yeah, I'm left with 4 and 8. So yeah, you've got to reduce one by one okay but i don't draw all this thing yeah so seven eight so i just keep this here okay now the number of ways you can write this as now some people write one by four by three by two which is fine or you can write out of one arrange one one p one means i want arrange one there's number five i'm choosing or i'm arranging the number five then our remaining four i'm arranging three of them yeah, 4p3 is the same as 4 times 3 times 2 and this will give us 24. Okay, this is only the first part. The second part, they want us to include, yeah, how many of these are even number. Now we have to condition, the first condition is it must start with 5. In order for it to be between 5,000 and 6,000, 6, it must start with 5. But the last digit, in order for it to be even, it must be 2, 4, or eight. Yep. Okay, let's consider the option for the first one. The first one I have one option. Yep. The first one I have one option, so we're a bit ugly. The last one I have three options. Now notice uh, this number here, two, four, eight, and five, they are different set of numbers. So whatever if I choose number five, yeah, from the first digit, it doesn't affect the selection for the last digit. Okay? So and remember we have five numbers to start with. I've taken one number to put in the first box, I've taken one number to put in the last box. Right, I'm left with 3 and 2. So the number of ways is 1 by 3 by 2 by 3. Or again, you can use the NPR notation. One number 5, I choose that. Um, remaining 3 digits, I, I arrange 2. And the last digit, I have 3 options to choose from, I arrange 1. So this will give us 80. All right. Moving on to the next one. Question number four. A couple of eight children are going to watch a movie in a cinema. They book a row of seats. So find the number of ways a family can be seated if the couple sit side by side. Okay, so I hope you already learn or know about the technique to uh, arrange, to find number of arrangement for item or in this case, a couple seated side by side. So number one, we draw two boxes joined together and this is the couple and this will be the eight children a big family so this will be eight okay now how many ways we can put the couple next to each other answer is two by one you can put the husband first the first box you have two options you can choose the husband or the wife now let's say the first box i choose the husband here i can't choose a husband i have to choose a wife here so the number of options reduces by one huh? two by one now we always tie this together as a as a box if you like yeah as a unit now so count how many boxes do you have now these are the eight children you plus one more box for the couple so you have nine boxes how many ways can we arrange nine boxes in a row it will be nine eight seven six five four three two one or nine factorial so the number of ways to arrange uh, the couples and the nine children will be two factorial by nine factorial, which is seven two five seven six zero. Okay. 
B. The couple sit at both ends of the row. So we have to draw again, uh, maybe I put a couple here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say couple, uh, maybe I say the parents. Uh, yeah, couples like this. Let us see, the children is also let us see, it's a bit, a bit confusing. So you have uh, eight children in between. These are the eight children. The couple or the parents, yeah, husband and wife, father and mother must sit on each, at each end. So now, how many ways can you put the father and mother here? Two, maybe one here. It's quite similar to the, the one in part A, yeah, but it's just that if I choose the father first, then the mother has to sit on the other end. If I sit, choose the mother in one end, the father has to sit on the other end. Eh? Right, so the, about the children, the children, same thing, no, no difference. I still have to put eight, nine, sorry, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So the number of ways to arrange the parents, two factorial and eight factorial. You can write one by one up to you, right? So your answer will be eight, zero, six, four, zero. Okay, for part C, uh, sit separately. Now we have to use a, un, a concept of set. Uh. So we know that if I have a universal set, right? And this is event A. Outside event A is called A complement. And A complement, the number of elements for A complement is your size of your universal set or your sample size. You minus total element for set A. So how does this relate to this question number four? See, the couple have to sit separately. To find number of ways they sit separately, yeah, we say number of ways sit separately. Well, this is a bit ugly. Separately will be total number of ways minus number of ways they sit together. Now we already have the number of ways they can sit together in part A, but to find total, we just take nine. Sorry. 10 factorial. Why 10 factorial if you don't have any condition? Not 10, a family of 10 people. How many ways can I sit a family of 10 in a row? 10 factorial. You minus the number of ways here. The couple sit together. 7, 2, 5, 7, 6, 0. We get the number of ways the couple do not sit together. Right? And that will give us 2, 9, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0. Okay. All right. So let's look at the next one. Arrangement with identical item. So here, how many ways to arrange the word baku? Now we can see, for baku, we have four different letters, right? So the number of ways is just four factorial. You can draw four boxes and see the number of ways is four, three, two, one. If you want, this will give us 24. Now, how about bucker? Now, bucker, you have two identical letter A, right? So, if I label this as A1 and A2, right? And I would say the number of ways to arrange them is still 4, 3, 2, 1. However, all right, let's say this is bucker with A1, A2. This is bucker with A2, A1. See, when I label A1, A2, they are different letter A, true? But the moment you remove, yeah, remove the subset, subscript, sorry, of B, of, of 1 and 2, what happened? Well, they appear to be the same word, bucker. See, again, I put it back, yeah. I put it back, you see. It is the same. I mean, if I label A1, A2, the two different arrangements, yeah. If I remove them, right, then... I read for them, they appear to be the same, same letter. So in this case, what we do is we take four factorial. Yeah, we first we uh, consider the arrangement of different letter A1, A2, which is four factorial. Then because the two A are identical, we need to divide by two factorial. Yeah, to cancel out the number of arrangement because they appear to be the same arrangement. Yeah, so this will give us. Sure. Okay, so how do you explain, right? So are the numbers ways the same? Answer is no, not the same. Why? We say Bucker 
as identical letter A. So when two letters are identical, right, you need to divide, in this case because you have two of them, two letter A, you divide two factorial to cancel out the number of arrangement. Okay, now let's move on to number six. I will say this is the most difficult question so far. Determine the number of roots for an object to move from point A to B if the object can only move up or to the right. Now, it's quite difficult to see this way, to even consider this, because a lot of people will say, hey, what do they mean by this? Okay, let me just give you a rough idea. So if I want to go from point A to point B, there are many ways I can go to point, point A. But I have to move either, you see, one, two, three, four, five. Five steps to the right, right? And I can have to move one, two, three, three step up. Okay, five to the right, three up. But you can do any combination. For example, I can do like this. I can go, maybe I just do one first, then the two up, and then uh, another one, two to the right, and then up, and then to the right, right? So the sequence is different, right? For example, okay, maybe I draw this out for you, okay? So I draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? To go from A to B, the first one uh, is very straightforward. I just go right, 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 five step. Then I go up, 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 correct? But the second case, right, I'm going right, up, up, right, right, up, right, right. So all together, I have to still have to do five step to the right, three step up, right? So now here's the thing: how do you write in permutation uh, and uh, method? Yeah, are you going to like count one by one? Count by counting one by one be crazy, right? So what we have to think of is this. Huh? Now normally, if I say I have eight items, let's say I have eight items arranged in a row we say 8 factorial. Now this is 8 factorial because the first one, I have 8 ways to choose, to arrange, 7, second one I have 7, third I have 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, you understand that, right? But this time is not the case. Huh? This time, you have to think, I have 8 boxes, if you like, okay? I have 8 boxes, okay? The question is, I have to do five step to the right, I have to do three step up. The sequence, how can I arrange five step to the right, three step up? So let's start with the first R. Now let's say we just label it R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. So where can I put it? R1? Well, I can put R1 at any one of this. So I have eight boxes, I need to put one of the R, letter R, but I have eight option, correct enough? So let's say I put R1 right here, okay? Then I still have seven other letters, including four, four R and three U, four, four right and three up. So I can put maybe, let's say the second R here. So the number of options reduces by one to seven. I can choose only from seven remaining boxes. Then the third R, maybe I put the third R here. So I have six options to choose from, yeah? And then the fourth R, I have five options to choose from. Maybe I put the fourth R here, right? Then the fifth R I have, let's say put here, four options to choose from. So the number of options to choose, to, to arrange, uh, is now uh, reduces by one, right? And let's move on to letter U. U is for up. I'm going up, right? I need to go five to the right you three steps up. So my first U may be here, U1. Okay, the, then I have three, two options left. Maybe U2 here. And the third U is, right? Quite right. So what does this give us? This is actually a factorial. Yeah, because you have five, uh, uh, five right step to move, or five with the R if you like to think that way, and three movement up, yeah? Or you can think of it as, uh, uh, three letter U, so total eight. But the thing is that this R1, R2, R3, they are all the same 
movement to the right. So if you remove the letter R, remember the concept that I've explained in just now, you move the subscript. Oh no, this one's a bit ugly. Eh? Okay, I tell you what, I'm not going to remove this. It's going to mess it up. Okay, my eraser looks a bit ugly. So, yeah. So we know they're identical, right? So what happened is I have to divide by 5 factorial, divide by 3 factorial. The 5 factorial represent the 5 movement to the right. The, yeah, 5 different letter R, if you like. And 3 factorial represent 3 letter U. Right? Because they're identical. If you remove it, for example, you see, uh, you can have R, R, U, R, R, U, R, U. Now, if I take out all the subscripts, they all appear to be the same. So you're going to divide by the number of identical letter R and letter U. And this will give us 56. Right? Very interesting question. Right? Okay, so let's move on to number 7. Okay, the last one. A group of 7 children are competing for six chairs, yeah, they arranged in a set circle during a musical chair game. So the children have to move in an anti-clockwise direction around the chair. So number of arrangement of the game. So number one, uh, before we talk about round table arrangement, so let's say we have six chairs. Okay, I'm going to put the six chairs this way, right? And I have seven children, seven children vying for six chairs. So this will be seven, six, five, four, three, two. And basically, the number of ways here is 7, if I were to arrange this way, 7, B, 6, okay? However, because we are arranging in a round table, like a chair is like a round table, okay? So, and there are 6 of them, so I can probably draw something like a hexagon shape. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so let's say we go like this, uh, children number 1, children number 2, okay, I'm going to name them A, B, C, D. Right? So this is A, B, C, D, E, F. Now take note that uh, when I start A here and I start A here, B, C, D, E, F. To us, it's the same arrangement. So A is always seated between B and F. Right? And can you see? The first and the second one is the same. Yeah, A is always seated between B and F. B is always seated between A and C. C is always seated between B and D. Right? Okay, and so on. So now the question is how many ways can we put the position of A here? So I've shown you, as I've shown you earlier, A can start the top here, A can start here, A can start here, right? And if I keep going, A can also start here, right? Basically, there are six different positions A can be seated. So, but they all appear to be the same arrangement, right? So for all cases, A is always seated between F and B. So in this case, we have to divide by 6. Or the way to think about it, I think I'm sure some of you have learned this before, you can just, uh, okay, I tell you what, I'll just write 7. 7 by 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. Then you divide by 6. You can cancel this way, but this is a bit long, right? So this will give us, use your calculator, 840. Okay? Alright. Okay, so that's all for this discussion. But before you go, guys, uh, take note that uh, we have a collection of uh, workbook, notes and tutorial, pass your question, yeah, and that is really, really uh, useful if you need a one additional workbook, a material that comes with video tutorial, right? You can contact us, WhatsApp, call us, find, us, find out more from our website. Yeah, or get in touch with us. All right. And recently, we have uh, uh, completed the drill practice edition metallic form four, and this is a, a question workbook with example practices with increased level of difficulty. Right. And these are some of the question. Yeah, from indices, search and logarithm. Right. That we have. Okay. So and it, this book comes with a complete solution. Yeah. So step by step solution. In case you got stuck, you can always refer to the solution to figure out how to complete this. You can get all this material from our Shopee account, right? Just Google us, Persecution 30 from, uh, or find us from Shopee, all right? You can order and the book will be sent directly to your doorstep. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot from here, right? Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.